Yeah, th thanks for the house. Uh, so, I mean, we, we just heard the announcement of a new Eric Bischoff show with John Alba. Like, what goes into these decisions when you decide I'm going to launch a new show on an already profitable service like this? Uh, Eric wants to talk more current stuff, and uh, he thought this was a way to do it. I would prefer not to talk about current stuff. He really likes it, as you can tell. Uh, so, yeah, we're excited to have another idea, and I would imagine pretty soon there will be some more ideas announced. Okay. For the you want to tell us what those are? Uh, I think you'll find out about some of that stuff today, maybe. So, okay. Maybe not yet today, but at some point. So what exactly happened where now you're co-hosting Ric Flair's podcast? Like, can you tell us a bit about that? Twitter? I do, uh, but like, is the show going to be any different now that you're there yeah, instead of Mark? Yeah, I'll be honest. That's what that is? funny, <laughs> okay. but... Uh, no, I mean, my, my vision for Rick's show has always been to walk, you know, sort of uh, cover myself up in the nostalgia. And who better to do that than Rick? So I think we will do guests occasionally. I think we'll do a lot of fan questions, but I think we'll do a lot of watch alongs. I want to see what, you know, like I got lucky enough years ago to, to watch Rick and Steamboat from Chi Town Rumble. He had never seen it back. Like, that was pretty cool to, to have him be able to watch that back, having never sat down and watched it. And say, oh, here's what I was thinking. I remember right here we were gonna do blah blah blah. I thought, man, what like a master's degree of wrestling we're getting right now. But we were just hanging out, so I want to record that and bring it out. But yeah, it's uh, unfortunate that it all happened the way it did. But here we are. Yeah. Conrad, you were very successful with Starcast, this perfect kind of alternative convention event that brought in a lot of different people, a lot of great partners like Fight and Triller and different people on board with it. Is there any chance of more events like that in the future? I, I think it's time for another Starcast. Uh, I can't say that I've put pen to paper and, and have an actual contract in hand, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't working on it. So we'll see what, what happens next. Well, we've got some pretty fun ideas, if and when it happens. Everybody and their brother has like a wrestling podcast nowadays. Uh, what do you think? How, looking at the market and how it is too, uh, and the potential of like oversaturation and stuff like that with you know wrestling podcasts in general. How do you feel? How do you go about approach a strategy with certain things, and knowing that what will appeal to maybe wrestling fans going forward? Uh, I think uh, there's more of an emphasis on video now, maybe than ever before. Uh, podcasting used to be something that was consumed one way. And it feels like some of our shows, Rick's show in particular, did very, very well on YouTube. And I think there's going to be more of an appetite for video. So uh, I've been working on a show. I've got nine or ten shows in the can right now where it's heavy emphasis on video. We haven't announced it yet, but we're going to continue to try to evolve the medium as much as we can. Because I think podcasting is just getting started. I mean, it really comes down to content creation, which is no different than what you guys are doing right now. Right. I'm going to ask you a fantasy question, Conrad. So say Hale throws over and Hulk Hogan decided he wants to do a podcast, and you know that he likes to embellish a little bit. Would you take it on? Would you try and get the truth of Hulk Hogan? Well, I don't know that he would have fun doing it. Uh, I, I would love the, the, the little kid in me became a wrestling fan because of Hulk Hogan, so that would be really a fun challenge to think about. But it's hard for me to imagine that he would get excited about sitting in front of my computer every week talking about the old stuff. And I like that occasionally he's never let the truth get in the way of a good story. That's a dustyism, <laughs> and you know it made it more fun to think about. He, he, Andre had to wait at truck stops and he tore every muscle in his back. He was telling the good story, so I give him a little bit of latitude. And how do you handle what's your? If you've done a podcast with someone and you've got what you think are the facts, and they say that's not true, how do you kind of have the balance of? challenging people and but you know also not going to let things like as a hard balance and strength which you do maybe. well i scream uh I scream at eric bischoff and bruce no i mean you know we're trying to create a good show but i don't think any of our hosts intentionally lie i think they're misremembering things i think they have their perspective uh, I bet if we were to interview, you know, somebody after a relationship and maybe a boyfriend and girlfriend break up, they've both got different stories on how it went down. Uh, so I think that's probably what it is more than anything. It's hard for me to imagine that Bruce or Eric or anybody just sits down and says, okay, I'm going to lie today. And I think when Hogan would maybe stretch the truth, he was just trying to entertain us. It's not like it's a deposition. Sometimes Rick's been known to just kind of blurt stuff out that he's not supposed to about like Charlotte's booking or something like that. Are you prepared to get like messages from Bruce that's like, what the hell, man? Uh, I'm trying not to talk about the current stuff a ton. Sure. I know that, that Rick likes to do that, but I legitimately don't have any inside information. I don't 
call Bruce and say, what's happening on night two? I, I, you should, then you should tell me. I, I will keep that in mind. Uh, nice one, guys. But no, I, as a rule of thumb, I'm, I'm not going to ask or talk about current stuff at all. You've got a superstar this 80s, 90s wrestling fan guy. Um, did you have any idea you go to this level that you're doing something so specific could have such a big turnout for an event like this other things you uh, No. I mean, I, I knew it was the type of content I would want to listen to. Uh, I knew that if it was interesting to me, it would be interesting to other folks who were my age and watched the same stuff I did, but I would be lying if I thought I would be standing here looking at all of you. No, this is a little surreal. Thank you, guys. Thank you, comrades. Thanks, everybody.